This is the tiny magnetic Zyk USB-C iPhone storage extender and it's awesome. It's super compact and lightweight, weighing just 24 grams. It supports fast 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds, which is more than enough to record ProRes 42 HQ Apple log footage at 4K 120p on an iPhone. It also supports pass-through charging wireless microphone connections and has a small display that shows information such as charging and transfer speeds. However, before I start, I do want to mention that Zyk did send me this device for free in exchange of making this video. With this said, let's talk about the storage options and pricing. So you have three storage options, 512, 1TB and 2TB. Here are the prices for each storage option. I have the 2TB version in here, which goes for $300. But Zyk also gave me a 20% off discount code to share with you guys, which is going to work on the Zyk's website with any product pretty much as long as the sum of the order is above $100. So basically what it means, this 2TB, $300 storage device is going to go down to $240 if you use the discount code, which is a bit more digestible. If you will, it is still somewhat expensive, especially if I compare it to my Samsung T7 Shield SSD in here, which is also 2TB and goes for about $200, sometimes even cheaper. But with this Zyk storage device, you are definitely paying for the compact form factor. So as you can see, it is extremely compact compared to the Samsung T7 Shield SSD. It's about 20% the size of the SSD and at the same time it is extremely lightweight weighing just 23.3 grams compared to 93.6 grams. So because of this it is far more convenient to use something like this with the iPhone because you can just plug it in and then it barely adds any bulk to the iPhone whereas if I'm going to plug in my Samsung SSD here as you can see, it is far more annoying dangling here on the side. Of course, I can buy some accessories to hold it in place here on the back somewhat, but it's not as easy and plug and play as this storage device because you can just take it in, plug it in to the phone and basically start using it. All right, now let's take a look at the ports. So obviously in front you have a USB-C port that supports 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds, but also here on the back you have a USB-C pass-through port which supports up to 27 watts of charging. Also, if you have a wireless microphone and you want to use it at the same time while using this storage device, you can plug in your wireless microphone in here, then plug everything to your phone and it's going to work just fine. And finally, if you want to back up an SD card, for example, to the storage device itself, you can also plug it in directly like so. But unfortunately, this port in here is limited to 480 megabits per second transfer speeds, unlike the port in front, which supports 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds. It is kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, I kind of understand this decision because if they had also 10 gigabits per second can transfer speeds at the back, it would have caused much more overheating issues. Now, in terms of overall usability, you can obviously just plug it into your device and use it like so, and it's going to work with any device that has a USB-C port, like a laptop, tablet, smartphone, portable gaming device and whatnot. But also here on the back, there are two little magnets and then the device itself comes with these two tiny cables. One is shorter, the other one is longer. This is for the Pro Max phone. This is for the Pro phone. I have the Pro Max phone and then you can just take it, plug it to the device, attach the device magnetically to the MagSafe magnets on the back and then plug the cable in and you basically have it mounted magnetically to your phone. But take into consideration that if you have a thicker case, it might not work optimally. For example, I have here a case for my iPhone from Pixook. It supports SD card storage, micro SD card storage, SIM card, and also SIM ejector tool. But basically it is significantly thicker than the other case. I'm gonna put my iPhone inside and then try to mount the Zyke storage device magnetically. It's a bit harder to put in the cable, but also the cable definitely touches the case, which might damage the cable over time. So if you have a significantly, you know, thick case, you might need to buy like a third party cable to be able to mount this device magnetically to your phone. And then another thing to consider if you are using like a filmmaking cage with your iPhone, first of all, you won't be able to easily mount the device to your phone, at least if you have a cage like mine from Freewell. And even if you use this extension cable in here, it is not really going to work because it is not long enough in here on this side of the cable. So basically, if you want to use this storage device with your iPhone and a filmmaking cage, you might 
need to come up with DIY solutions, like buying like a third party cable to be able to mount this storage device to your phone while using like a filmmaking cage. Now, another cool thing about this device is definitely the display here on the back, which shows you a couple of important things like the device's temperature, the lifespan of the device, the charging speeds, if you are charging your phone through this device, also the overall storage capacity, and then the transfer speeds of the device it's plugged into. But also if you're going to copy a file from an SD card, for example, to this storage device or vice versa, you'll be able to see the transfer speeds here on the screen. So let me show you how it looks. I'm going to copy a file from my SD card, which is in here. Copy, go back to the Zyke storage device and then just paste it. And let's flip it around to show you the transfer speeds. I'm not really seeing the exact number, but it should definitely show up. So these features on the display are not revolutionary in a way, but they are kind of handy if you want to quickly see at what speed you're charging your device, the transfer speeds if you're backing up the data from this device to something else and whatnot. All right, and finally, let's talk about transfer speeds and overheating performance. So first of all, in terms of transfer speeds, I'm actually pretty impressed with this device because it is actually slightly faster than my Samsung T7 Shield SSD. I got 1000 megabits per second for the read speeds and then 900 megabits per second for the write speeds compared to 900 for the read and 800 for the write with the Samsung T7 Shield SSD. And honestly, this is kind of impressive because of the compact form factor of this device. Maybe if you are going to transfer a large amount of data to this device or from it, it is going to slow down overall because of overheating issues. But honestly, that's pretty much the case also with an SSD like this. Usually if you're transferring large amount of data, the speeds are gonna go down because of overheating issues. All right, now let's talk about overheating performance. I have my notebook in here with some numbers and whatnot. And I did all the tests with my iPhone 16 Pro Max using the Blackmagic camera application. I set the codec to the highest quality ProRes 42 HQ and then I used Apolog and I filmed at 4K, 25p, then 100p and then 120p. So here are the results. The first test was using 4K 25p while charging my iPhone at the same time through the pass-through charging port and I managed to record only for 25 minutes before the recording stopped. It didn't say the device overheated and whatnot but I think that's what happened because when I touched the storage device it was was relatively hot to the touch and then did the same test again without charging my iPhone this time and I managed to record for three hours and 20 minutes before the battery died on my iPhone so basically no issues at all and then I bumped the frame rate to 100p basically 4k 100p and I managed to record for 12 minutes only before the recording stopped and this time I didn't use any pass-through charging because I knew it's going to cause even more overheating issues and then I waited a little bit and I switched to 4k 120p 20p and I only managed to record for six minutes before the recording stopped and then I tried putting the storage device on the back of my iPhone with the MagSafe magnets to see if it's going to help and whatnot and I set the frame rate to 100p again and I managed to record for 12 minutes so basically according to these tests at least you are safe if you're going to record in 4k 24 25 30p without charging the device at the same time. If you are going to charge the device at the same time, you're gonna have some overheating issues, especially if you're going to record in a hot environment. Now, if you are shooting at 4K 100p or 120p, it is going to overheat significantly faster. So basically at its best, it can give you 20 minutes of recording time with a good, you know, room temperature and whatnot. But honestly, nobody that I really know records for long periods of time at this high of frame rate. I usually record for like 10, 20 seconds maximum at this frame rate so for me it is not going to be an issue but if you do record for long periods of time at 4k 100 120 p take into consideration that this device might overheat even though it has like a cooling fan inside so to summarize this is definitely a very niche product but i would say it's worth the high price if you value the compact form factor of this device because compared to using something like this it's definitely much more convenient because of its compact 
form factor. But if you are worried about overheating issues and you want something more reliable, maybe something like this will work better for you, but it's not going to be as easy to use as something like this because you can just take it, plug it into your phone and it's barely noticeable. So regardless, I think this is it for today. Let me know down below if you have any questions or comments about this device. Also make sure to check out the link down below for this device with the 20% off discount code. And I guess I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.